we are at the friendly bakers workshop and uh, we'll see what they have prepared for us today and uh, take us through some of the things that we can see here Oops. all right thank you very much uh, today we will be doing a black forest cake and before we do that i'm going to take you through the tools that we'll be using remember we had traditional methods where people used like a muiko that uh, which you call wooden spoon but the good thing today is we have new, new tools that make our work very efficient and i want to take you through some of the tools that we are using today and uh, the first and foremost we are going to start with the hard mix which is a very key and uh, crucial uh, and any tool when it comes to baking so today we have uh, as you can see this random uh, mixer and uh, it's one of the best mixers because you you know it is very powerful it is 300 watts imagine 300 watts like a machine a puff very very puff machine let me uh, show you what is inside here um, remember it comes with uh, the beaters and the door hook also you can see uh, let me show you the beaters uh, as you can see these are what you call beaters for the mixer and they are very pow uh, powerful and very strong the good thing about uh, the beaters these handles for the beaters they're very strong eh? that's why they don't break easily you get some mixers you just try to mix even you are doing whipping eh? and they just break so these are very strong uh, we also have dough hook for those who are, who are doing puff pastry this one comes in hand eh? and they are very good for that work all right so today we are going to be using beaters uh, and now I want to show you the machine it's very beautiful machine good-looking and very powerful this is a machine the Ramton mixer so uh, this one you can get at top serve they are the best all right uh, so that is it then uh, we have the next thing of course we need a turntable when it comes to decoration, uh, this one is the best tool to have because it helps you to get even uh, edges when you're smoothening your cake. So, turntable is one of the best uh, tools to use on that. Then, again, uh, when you're doing decorations, we'll need uh, piping nozzles. So, when we are doing patterns on the cake, we need the first uh, nozzle that we have here. It is called 1M, as you can see it. This 1M. Then uh, we also have a TSL 4B, it's a small version of 7FT, so it works so well, it gives you, uh, you see those uh, seashells, yeah. they are very good when you are decorating on, on top of a cake. Then uh, again we have the petal nozzle, we have different sizes, this is size 104 so you can get, get smaller and uh, all wider petals. yes so this is good the petal nozzle this one of four all right when we are now uh, baking we will need a whisk you need a whisk because we need to mix together our, our ingredients to make the butter and uh, remember a whisk is not, not just a whisk now those are uh, whisks that are, are detachable the handle and uh, they, are, they are plastic so I recommend the metallic one and I can see top serve has the best I just love this one eh? uh, another the reason why I'm saying that when you are whisking with the, the one that is detachable when you're whisking the handle comes out uh, making the work hard for you so this one is the best then of course my best tool palette knife all right before we go on there is something uh, I want to show you uh, the hand mixer is one of the power mixers we have in Kenya and uh, you can see here at uh, this knob we have gears from 1 to 5 so uh, what uh, Nini, what you, you need you need just to adjust this knob to get the speed that you want when you're working with it, it depends if you're whipping whipping cream or you're doing creaming like when you are doing creaming we put it at full speed eh? but when you are uh, doing whipping cream eh? you put it at the lowest gear so the more you, you put gears the more the power okay and you have turbo button here if you want it to be have more speed or more power you just use on that we also have the beaters you just insert in any pot like that then again the these ones are the ones that we used when you we are we are doing creaming or mixing any any anything like whipping cream the same thing you power with this knob from gear one to gear five you can see very powerful and also you can press the turbo again if you want to increase power all right thank you very much 
So we go to uh, to the next one. We have a um, palette knife. You can see this 10 inch palette knife, curved one. Let me just, maybe if you want to see, this is a curved uh, palette knife. This one is used for spreading cream on the side of the cake. I just love this tool. It has made for me like millions, good millions, mm. just scraping on the side. And what will be the difference between the angled one like we have here and then there's usually the straight palette knife? What yes, we, we have uh, the straight and the curved. The, the good thing about the curved, eh, you see when you're uh, like uh, smoothing the top of a cake, eh, you don't have to raise a big angle because it's already curved. You see now for the for the straight one, you have to raise a big angle which may cause uh, the front side to scrape off all the, the cream. But for this, you just raise slightly and you're able to smoothen very nicely. Okay. Alright, thank you. Then, we have uh, uh, the spatula. This one is one I love most, and the reason I, I love it eh, is very flexible because it is silicone. You see, it's very flexible. So when I'm scraping, uh, I want to maybe put the the cream to the piping bag. This is what I mostly use. And when I'm scooping the butter to the tin, this is what I use. It's a very good one. You can get any color, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Then we have the scrapers these are three sets scrapers as you can see so let me open it for you let me open it for you we have uh, the curved uh, plain sc scraper we have uh, the the patent scraper it has two sides the small and uh, the the bigger uh, patents and we have the plain one so this one is what i love the most when i'm doing the sides of, of my cake you see uh, we are going to do the the, the demo on how to, de to to use this so you see the, the magic it does with these patterns so keep it here then uh, for those who are not able to uh, use the palette knife to scrap off the excess cream on the side of the cake we have the plain scraper as you can see this is a plastic one so you can use this to scrape off the excess cream on the side and the good uh, thing is a plastic one don't go for metallic because of the weight this one is the best because it is light you're able to control your hand uh, when you're doing the uh, scraper, scraping of the excess cream all right then we have a piping bag of course we need to put pattern on the cake so we have this 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 is a disposable piping bag we also have the reusable but at the moment we are going to use the disposable of course the piping bag goes with the nozzle which we are going to put inside and do the piping on the cake so i love uh, this one because they are they're easy to use and uh, for those who are lazy like baba steph in terms of cleaning not making cake i'm very good in making cake so this one because they're disposable you just put your nozzle and pipe then you can throw away and use another one so they come in uh, different sizes we have the small disposable and uh, we also have the big ones so it depends with what you're doing yeah so if you, it's a small cake you just need a small one if you have a lot of cream to, to do you can put in the big ones all right so those are the tools that we can uh, we are going to use when you, we are baking and decorating and remember all this you can get at top of in all their branches so thank Thank you very much. Let's go to baking. All right, we are back here and now we want to do the real baking. So uh, with me here, I have my eight inch. Of course, I told you we will be baking a black forest. So black forest, we, uh, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to do half kg and I'm going to use eight inch tin. That is one kg tin. Of course, I need a whisk. I need a spatula. And these are the beaters for the, my mixer, the rampo mixer. And also a teaspoon for measuring my uh, flavor. And again, we need sugar, sugar, I already measured the sugar. Also, we need eggs, as you can see, these are eggs. Um, we also need to grease our tin. You remember, if you don't grease your tin, uh, the cake is going to stick as you are going to, uh, as you're removing it. So we need the grease. I'm going, to, this is just a mix of uh, oil and a little flour. 
uh, the baking flour that you'll be using so that's what I've mixed here then of course you need the mixing bowl this is where we are going to be mixing and uh, of course we have flour here and this is flour and uh, dark cocoa and uh, we're going to have another bowl to do the sieving remember sieving is very important when it comes to baking because we need uh, to aerate our our mixture so we start from sieving that's where we start aer aerating all right so the first thing uh, for this black forest we'll need uh, uh, the self raising flour or you can use the all-purpose flour we also need uh, sugar we need dark cocoa powder and uh, eggs and vanilla essence so procedure the very first thing as you uh, you're baking uh, you have to grease your tin and the reason why is because baking is not like uh, the chapati or the mandazi it's because uh, you need to once you're done mixing the butter it needs to go to the tin direct and direct to the oven because if you leave it uh, is the bubbles or the air that we had in, uh, uh, incorporated in the mixture is going to come out so we need that air for our cake to rise all right okay. so that, that's why we have to make sure we grease our tin and this is uh, basically how you do it so I say this is our grease you just take this is a pastry brush the silicone one so you have to mix for the flour and oil to incorporate you don't have any ratio for the for the oil and uh, the flour you just put a little flour to the oil that you put eh? then you take a little you can just pour inside you see like this don't put a lot of it then you take your pastry brush and you just spread it you start with the bottom remember when it sticks to the cake uh, sticks to the bottom then you have the to remember if you if you don't uh, apply the, the grease at the bottom and it sticks you have to rebake uh, another cake so you don't want to make losses in your business so just uh, uh, make sure it's well greased you start with the bottom and you go to the side very nicely you spread it Once you're done, you can see uh, the tin is well done, the sides and the, the bottom. If there is excess, you can remove it, but now this one is enough. All right, so that's uh, how we grease the tin. Again, the other thing, we need to preheat our oven. And uh, the reason why we preheat our oven eh, is the, the same reason I said earlier, is because we don't want to keep our butter waiting before it, it preheats. So we need uh, to be putting the tin, put in the oven that, that is already heated and it started with an immediately okay. all right so we have uh, uh, greased our tin we have preheated our tin we also have to do the measurement of uh, of, uh, of our ingredients so we had already measured for you then and now we need a bowl where we're going to mix this so this the method that we use for black forest is called whiskey method so we are going to uh, when you're using a hand mixer it makes work easier because we are going to do to do the separation of the egg, egg whites and the yolk so I want we, we do that so let me show you the magic how we separate when you don't have the se separator for the egg white so you just fit somewhere like this you have an opening like this just make an opener at the top like that then you see the opening is not uh, not very big so that the yolk doesn't fall then you tilt downward then you twist keep twisting no shaking so keep twisting the egg bite is going to come out so uh, you just need to make sure that 80% of the egg white has come out like that then we take another egg can you try <laughs> no <that's laughs> right so i'm just, not very confident in that right, so you just open up just a little opening at the top then tilt it downward so avoid any shell falling in the mixture also uh, the yolk like that so we take another one just a small opening again just keep twisting like that no egg yolk then of course now we are going to take our hand mixer 
and we are going to be using the beaters so make sure you clip them inside both of them So uh, you're asking well, how do you know that is now ready? Yeah. Uh, when you're starting, it's a bit shiny. As you, uh, when we are starting, it's a bit shiny before we started mixing. Yeah? Once you continue mixing, the gloss look disappears. So after looking at the gloss look, for stiffness, you can check by turning the, the ball like that. Even if you shake, it cannot fall down. Remember, it was a liquid. Actually, this is the, the water that our, our our black forest will be using. So because we are not putting any other liquid, so it's water. But when you whip it, it, it doubles the volume. And it, it is the one that we are using as a raising agent. So you can see it is not falling down. All right, after this, we are going to put sugar. Thank you. Then you just sprinkle on top so on top so that you don't break uh, the egg whites like that. Again, you take your hand mixer. We are going to do again with high speed. So once you put sugar, you can do it for a minute so at least it will dissolve in the mixture. Then after this, we are going to put back our egg, uh, egg yolk so we can put them somewhere. Alright, so you beat until you get your soft peaks like this is foamy but it is moving inside. Alright, so after we get our soft peaks, uh, before we continue with the process, we have to put on your, our oven. So our oven we are using Electra right now. So Electra has four knobs, the 100 liters. So we have the function, we have the temperature, we have the selector and the timer. So we start with the function. Function we are not using when we, we are baking cake. So this one should be at a point where it is off, where there is nothing. Eh? Then we have temper temperature. Of course, we are baking at 180 degrees. So we are going to put at 180. So the, uh, the maximum is 250. So we are going to reduce in between 150 and 200. Uh, we put them. So that's where 180 is. Then we have selector. Selector, we have to put where the oven heats with uh, the top and the bottom heating elements. So double heat. Yeah. So it must be here, not uh, the bottom or the top heat only, both of them. Then again, timer. Uh, the recipe says you bake between uh, that five for five minutes. So we bake with the maximum. Actually, you can add like five minutes to be sure that cake bakes. So we are going to do 50, 50 minutes. So to put it on, you just uh, put like 10 minutes. It starts uh, uh, preheating. Preheating. So once you you, you just uh, put the timer on, it is goes goes on. Uh, brown here this this light. Uh, once you put it on, it will be on, and you see it. Eh? But when you, you achieve the temperature that is inside the oven, eh, this one, this light is going to go off. So don't think that uh, it's not heating once it goes off. It's because it achieved the temperature that is you you had uh, put, right? All right. If uh, your oven doesn't, you're not sure of the oven temperature. Mm -hmm. Is there a gadget you can use? Oh yes, to oh yes. Sure you get that? There are two ways you, you can do that. Eh? The first way and the right way is give, getting an oven thermometer. You can hang it inside here, the rack you, uh, inside here. Then you preheat your oven 10 minutes before. Then you can read the temperature. If uh, it is, uh, you have put here 180 and it's reading 200, now that oven is overheating. So you need to reduce the temperature. temperature. If you put uh, and it reads uh, like 150 and here you have put 180, it is uh, underheating. So you, ha you have to increase the temperature increase until the temperature. you get the point where the oven is it bakes. 180? Okay. Yes. 
Alright, so after now we have preheated our oven. Now we are going to come and put our essence. So you're going to give me vanilla. So uh, we're going to use uh, this vanilla essence from Deep, which you can get it at Top Serve. So it's one of the best. I used that for the uh, Black Forest. So since this is a half kg, I'm just using one teaspoon of vanilla. Right, like that. And uh, thank you. Then we just mix it, mix it for like one minute or oh, 30 seconds. All right, uh, 30 seconds or one minute is enough. All right, so after, after that, after mixing, now we have our mixer here. So we are going to step that it's called folding. In folding is where you incorporate the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. So as you can see, Masi had uh, have sieved my, our, our dry ingredients. See, these are the dry ingredients to incorporate more air to the flour. So we are not going to use the hand mixer to do that because we don't want it smooth but not over, mi over mixing. So that's where we are going to use the whisk. So this one is a very crucial uh, tool when it comes to mixing the uh, uh, folding. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, fold in in batches. So this one I'm going to divide in two batches. So I'm going to put like a half. So I sprinkle on top of that. And for the cocoa powder, yes. can we just use any kind of dark cocoa powder or are you, do you recommend any specific one? Yes, the alkaline one, which is the best, of which now this one I got from Top South and it's one of the best. So once now I divide in two batches, this is how I do. I just rotate my whisk inside, then I keep shaking like this. So remember not to over mix. So once you see your fly is incorporated in the mixture, you stop, you add the other batch. You see, I know you are thinking it's a cream. <laughs> <laughs> or ice cream, <laughs> it looks like one. Eh? <laughs> okay, so this is what you get after uh, it is well mixed. So we still have our foam. So we have, you have to take care of the foam because it is the raising agent. So if the foam goes down and uh, the, the mixture becomes a liquid, eh, just know that that cake is not going to rise. So once I'm done, I put the other batch. Again, thank you. Then again, the same way, I keep shaking as I rotate, sideway, center, So uh, again, you have to be very careful so that not to over mix. Over mixing, we have said uh, what it happens, your cake is not going to rise because uh, the air that you had incorporated inside is going to escape. So you have to be gentle. So make sure all the flour has incorporated before you put it in your baking tin. I'm almost there. So we don't want to have any flour or any dry ingredient which has not incorporated in the mixture. So we are done, as you can see. All right. Another bowl here to put this. So. Uh, before you put uh, 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 into your baking tin, you need to have a spatula like this one. Uh, the, I said this is a silicone spatula to confirm if everything has mixed at the bottom. Because you don't want to put in your baking tin, then you realize there is flour at the bottom. So you keep checking all around if uh, flour has mixed. And you see how I'm doing it? If uh, just in case the flour had not mixed, as you do this, eh? all sides eh? it's going to mix okay all right so i can see my my uh, my butter so at this point now it uh, we call it butter yeah b a t w t e r so my butter is ready now to go to my tin so you can just confirm the oil or the grease 
food is well spread. So you don't want to make a mistake where the cake sticks to to the tin. Eh? Alright, so I'm going to put my my butter. And so my butter is ready, so I'm just going to pour it in my baking tin. So I scrape off the sides. You see how the spatula is working so nicely. It's cleaning well the sides. Then I pour it in my baking tin or baking pan. So I don't want to, uh, to steal from my customer. I have to make sure all the butter goes in the tin. Because I want my customer to get what uh, they paid for. All right, so that's okay. You can see we have my butter here in the tin. So it's ready now to go to the oven. So to make white forests or passion forests, uh, for white forest you just uh, remove cocoa powder and you have white forest. For passion forests you just need to uh, remove cocoa powder and vanilla essence and add passion flavor. So it will be passion forest. So let's take it to the oven and uh, bake it for 50 minutes. Alright, and now after putting in, that's when now you set the 50 minutes. So we're going to set 50 minutes is in between here. So there's a pointer here, which points. So in between here, it's 50 minutes. Okay? Yeah. Alright, so you're going to wait for 50 minutes. Then our cake will be done. So that, that's it about uh, baking. Back to you, Marcy. So as we wait for the cake to finish baking. Mm -hmm throughout the baking processes mm -hmm. uh, people face so many challenges from your observation mm -hmm. kindly highlight some of these challenges what if you don't test your cake before you remove that means maybe the cake uh, is underbaked what it forms is a gooey center where it didn't cook eh? once you, uh, you remove it from the oven what happens that part just dries up but it's not well cooked so that part is very sticky and should avoid removing it before you taste from the oven because if you give uh, your customer such a cake uh, you're going to lose your customer so make, always make sure that uh, your cake is well baked before you remove, remove it from, from the, the oven. oven last but not least uh, the challenge uh, another one you can get cake, uh, cake sticks to a pan if a cake sticks to a pan, you didn't grease your tin at all, or you didn't grease it well. So make sure you grease your tin well, so you, that you don't have that. Another challenge is cake not raising well. So uh, uh, the, uh, the challenge is uh, you overmix. You remember there's a point we are talking about folding, yeah. where you bring the dry and the wet ingredients together. Yes. So if you do it for a long time, overmixing is called uh, with when you do it for a long time. Eh? So you remove all the air that you had incorporated when you're mixing. Eh? So the, uh, it becomes a bit of a liquid or very smooth. So you have uh, expelled all the air in the mixer. So you can not rise. So those are the some of the challenges that bakers face and that's what they ask the most okay yeah. the other question most people ask mm -hmm. is about the costing of cakes mm -hmm. what is your take on that right when it comes to costing eh, we have something we call cost of sale so cost of sale is any cost that you incur to make the final product be it uh, like, like now when our cake is baking we're using electricity you need to take the, uh, to have the cost of electricity all the cost of ingredients we are using 300 gram of flour maybe so you have to know how much money does it cost for the 300 grams so you do the cost for all ingredients including the 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 air time that you use to call the client you have to include all, all it all of it there so maybe if you do like and you get like uh, for one kg the total cost is a bit uh, about 800 eh? so that's what uh, we call cost of sale then again you have for you to be in business you need to pay yourself so you can take like 30 percent of the total cake costs another thing is you need to grow so you need profit so you have to charge for the pro profit because profit is what you if you want to add maybe an oven a mixer you grow through profit another thing you need to uh, to include in your costing is uh, the the legal requirements 
if you are going to open a shop you need a license from the city uh, from uh, what do you call the city council the county government the yeah. yes uh, you need the, that license another thing of uh, when it comes to medical uh, for baking you need medical c cover when you're doing something with the food eh? also you need food handling certificates so that's uh, it's covered in the legal requirements so you also need rent each yeah. cake should pay your rent so you take like uh, for the legal requirements and the uh, uh, rent you take like 10 percent of the cost of the total cost yes of sale yes so there's actually a process for you to achieve the final cost of your product yes actually what is uh, in it for you to get the final uh, price of a cake the uh, uh, the final price you achieve it after checking the design because there are those design complex they take a lot of your time so you have to add uh, labor costs so you you can take like 50 percent of the total cake cost because of the labor there are others maybe uh, the customer needs to add some toppers the edible print uh, yeah. like the spider-man so you have to check now the cost of those and you remember this for you to know the, the costs like for the toppers remember maybe in your area you don't have like no when I'm here in Keno and now top serve is in Nairobi I have to uh, send them the money for the print maybe uh, print you charge around 300 for the a5 right then there is that cost for sending that is 200 so I have to include that so 200 plus 300 so if a customer asks me how much is your 1 kg uh, cake if I had done all those costs and I saw uh, just a normal cake which is written have a birthday is 1500 then uh, the customer said what about uh, you add me an edible print so I'm telling uh, I'm going to tell them you need to add 500 for the print to cover my cost for the transport and the print, and itself. The print itself so the final price is uh, determined by the design of the cake and is there how do you do the price differentiation for the cream cakes and mm -hmm. the fondant cakes uh, the cream cake when it comes to work or the labor is a bit uh, is not too much but when it comes to fondant achieving a design a good design it is a lot of work that's why you see when i'm charging 30 percent for the whipped cream for cream cakes eh? for labor for fondant i charge like 50 percent that's why you see you now the fondant cakes price go higher because achieving you see now these are design that, that have been doing the the basket the african basket the yeah, cake yeah. that cake you can do it for like five hours one cake for a cream cake or uh, the same size you do it for only like 30 minutes so you have to charge for your time yep. actually as bakers we don't charge as in the the cost of ingredients we charge our time and our skills so you have to incorporate that so that's why the labor for for foreign designs goes up okay that's it for now mm. so maybe we can check if our cake is ready and mm -hmm. see what next is the next step all right so uh after the cake is ready we are going to do decorations i want to show you some skills when it comes to whipped cream it is my uh st my strength when it comes to cream cake so i want to take you uh, through the the decoration part and i know you're going to love it it's very very it looks very simple when i'm doing it but i'm, I'm going to give you uh, to try you see if you can i'll do try it. we'll see <laughs> what right. i can do with it all right let go Now our cake is done for decorations where do we start all right uh, before you start you have to make sure you have everything uh, on the table so to be sure when you start you're not going to miss anything so we are doing a linear the black forest decorations so we need fruits of course if the black forest doesn't have fruits it's just like a chocolate cake eh? so that's why you need fruits uh, again we need now the serrated knife or the bread knife I love this this 12 inch uh, we have 12 inch 14 inch I guess this is 14 inch yeah this is one of the best so to to uh, layer our cake so we need a bowl we are going to do a whipping we also have the nozzle I'm going to use 1m is 1m is what I'm going to use and of course we have the piping bag 
the pipe bag which I'm going to use uh, the nozzle to pipe on the cake and uh, I, for black forest you need to moisten the black forest so that's why you need sugar syrup it's just sugar and water because we need pearl knife because we need to smoothen the surface of the cake all right again uh, we need the whipping cream in this case i'm going to use pristine we have many brands we have uh, abiante we have uh, whip pack but today we are going to use pristine and it's what i love the most and uh, of course we need a cake to decorate so the black face that we just baked is ready now this is what we are going to decorate uh, for black forest we need chocolate chocolate is very important when it comes to forest cake so in this case because it is uh, black forest we are use, going to use the dark chocolate of course we need a, a spatula to scoop the, the cream from the bowl to the piping bag so this one is good and of course we need a, a board where we are going to put our cake as we decorate so we need balls, extra ball. I'm going to show you what, what, what I'm going to do with this. All right, are you ready when we start? Uh, yes, we are. This is the cake uh, we had baked. So we have to wait, uh, to wait for it to pull so that we can be able to decorate. Remember, the best uh, taste for cake, it needs at least four hours to cool down. So we had to wait for that time so that we can be able to decorate the cake. So where do we start? All right, now uh, we are going to start with whipping cream. So we are going to whip for the half, this is a half kg of cake. So we need to whip uh, the cream. So, and uh, for you not to have a waste of cream, you need to have mesh hammers. So like now I start with half kg. For half kg, we are going to use one and a half cups of whipping cream. For that will be enough to, uh, to decorate your cake and also do piping okay okay so we got to for one kg one kg of cake use two cups so these two cups and uh, for 1.5 kg you, you need to two and a half cups and for two kg you need three cups of this so that you don't have a lot of waste of cream so because this one is a half i'm going to just whip only one and a half so uh, once you get your whipping cream this is the point where you cut because now you, uh, you're not using uh, the whole packet, maybe you need like just one and a half. So and you don't want your, your cream to spoil. Remember once you cut uh, the whipping cream, it goes bad after like uh, three or four days. Eh? So what you do, you cut a small uh, opening here. Then once you finish, you just put it back and you can put maybe a, a, a tape here around just to avoid any bacteria uh, going in when you put it in your fridge. So you cut just around here. So this one has had, uh, had cut because we were doing another decoration. So what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure one cup. So I fill it to the blim. So we need one cup, like that. I put it in my bowl. Then I can estimate half of it. I just go halfway, like that. That's enough. And remember, there's something I had forgotten. Remember for like pristine, you have to chill it in the fridge before you use, between seven to 10 degrees. Then another thing, when we be doing, uh, we'll be whipping our, our cream, uh, what happens, the cream has a gloss look. That's what you check for the most. Eh? Yeah. So you have to make sure once you whip, the gloss look disappears. And the thing is, the gloss look disappears gradually. So you have to keep your eyes on uh, when you're whipping. Yeah? Yeah. And that's why you need to be somewhere there's good lighting. So you can, look, uh, you can see the gloss look disappearing. Okay. So we are going to whip it. Of course, we are going to use our rental mixer. I said this is one of the best mixers we have which you can find at top top so and when you're whipping you don't you don't use the high speed remember we said uh, like uh, the gear the gears of the of the machine it has one to five so we use the medium actually we use the first gear of the machine so that uh, your cream do doesn't over whip very quickly 
all uh, as in it doesn't whip quickly and not stable so that's why we are going to use the medium, the medium gear speed. all right so i just put it inside then i start it As you whip, eh? when oil starts forming, eh? you can keep checking and look closely. If it is shining, it's not ready. So I, I want to ask you, is it shining? No, not much. Are you sure? Not much. Not so much. That, not so that's the time I'm, I was looking, not much. That means it's not ready. So you have to continue whipping okay. until it's not, so it doesn't have any gloss look. Eh? So I'm going to stop at that point. As you can see, the cream is very stable. The gloss look has disappeared, eh? as yeah. you can see, and it's very stable, right? All right, now we take our cake. So you can put this aside for me. Thank you. So of course now I need a turntable, and I need my board where I'm going to decorate my cake. Now I need my cake. Remember, I always wrap the cake to avoid it losing moisture as it cools down. Eh? Okay. So I want uh, the cake to remain with its moisture. So you can put this aside for me. All right, there we have this is a half kg black forest. So I am going to take my spatula, uh, my palette knife. Sorry. Then I'm going to apply a little cream down here. Remember, if you don't apply some cream, actually you can do with cream or glucose syrup. You can apply some glucose syrup, eh? of which I uh, I love glucose syrup because cake is firm to the board. Eh? Okay. Doesn't move when you're you're decorating or transporting to your customer. So that's why you can instead of cream, you can use glucose syrup. Glucose syrup. So I put a little of cream down here. Then, when I'm decorating, I need to uh, have the flat top on top, right? So that the cake is flat on top. Eh? So I place it at uh, the center of my board. Then I'm going to press gently for my cake to hold on the board, eh? like that. Then, let me move this aside, move this aside. All right, we need a serrated knife. This is 14 inch for us to do layering. So we are going to start with layering. So I'm going to cut through. I'm going to cut through. And divide my cake into two. Then there. Again, for black forest or any forest cake, they are not very moist, they are a bit dry when they come uh, from the oven. So you need sugar syrup and a spray, spray gun. So this is what I'm going to use to spray, uh, to moisten the cake. So I'm going, just going to spray on top here. Make sure you have a good amount of uh, the syrup so that your cake is moist. Then I'm going to take the other one and moisten too. That's enough. Our cake is now moist. Then I'm going to take my cream and uh, put it here. So you make sure you spread the cream nicely.
right uh, inside here you have we you can put either blueberry filling or the strawberry filling so I'm just going to put some here so I'm just going to scoop some and put inside here Remember, you want to uh, to make your cake very test tasty. So that's enough. Can put this aside for me. All right. So once I put, I need to spread it inside. Like that. I take my other part of my cake and I put it nicely make sure that you it fits where it was like that okay so we need uh, some service because we have to be uh, to keep cleaning the boards so because we need a neat finish so we keep cleaning so that's what uh, we have just done is called layering then again after layering we are going to do uh, crumb coating so I'm going to take a little cream and spread on top so this crumb coating is to hold in the crumbs so that they don't appear in your final look of the cream so you do uh, from uh, top and then you go to the side so you go around so just it's just a, a small coat don't put a lot of cream remember we have measured our cream so if we put a lot of cream uh, it won't be enough even for the piping so I make sure I cramp coat all sides all right so you then you smooth them for the all the sides to be even like that now you clean your knife nicely on one edge of the bowl make sure uh, when you're putting the final layer there's no crumb that gets there so we said you have to keep cleaning so you clean the excess cream that is on the board all right so once you're done So I have my dustbin here. Uh, then we are going to put our final cream. Remember, uh, the knife should be clean, so it doesn't have any crumbs on it. So you can wipe with a with a nice clean towel or a serviette, like that. Then you take good amount of cream and you put on top here, like that then spread it evenly remember we need to have a layer on top so make sure that uh, you spread it nicely on top and it should be even from the center to the edge So once you're done spreading, you just make sure it goes to the edge nicely. Then you can smoothen using the pulp knife. You just make sure it is touching from the center to the edge and you put an angle in front. So the angle I'm talking about is the front angle. So that's why you, you put an angle for it to smoothen, not very big. If you put a very big angle, it's going to scrape off of the cream. You need just, uh, we call it angle of 30 degrees. That's what I'm putting here. 
and I smoothen my cake on top. Uh, so I need just to go like two or three times on top and I have my smooth surface. So once I'm done smoothening, I have to remove my knife when the cake is still rotating and I leave my pallets up like that so it doesn't leave any mark or where you ended uh, it ended when you're smoothening so I need still to keep cleaning my knife all right now we are going to go to the sides so uh, I'll keep adding a little at a time like that so I, I put I make sure it goes all all to the board then split gently back and forth like that so don't let it too thin so you'll keep adding you'll keep adding then uh, push it downward to the board then uh, you push it in, uh, in front back and forth back and forth like that then I'll keep adding until I go uh, 360 degrees until my cake is fully covered with cream done if we were adding color to the cream mm -hmm. at what point will we have done that once uh, your cream is well whipped that's when you add color and remember there are two things you can over whip or under whip remember once you whipped it was stable yeah. when you add color it, that means you're going to whip again if you whip, whip it for a long time it gets over whipped and once it gets over whipped it's very firm and uh, it gives you challenge when you're applying on the cake and smoothening so make sure once you uh, you add color just whip it for like seconds for to avoid it over whipping yeah okay yes so let's continue and we add our cream so make sure the cream spreads from top to bottom and evenly And there we go we have applied cream all through now once you you feel the cream on the side you need to smoothen eh? yeah. so you clean there are no smoothening you can use the the pallet knife which I'm used to you just place it um, perpendicularly straight on the cake and it touches your cream from uh, top to bottom then you rotate the cake clockwise direction so when you're using a pallet, a pallet knife you is you're doing it clockwise direction other than uh, the pallet knife you can use the the scraper the scraper the plain scraper so let me place in a way where you can see what i'm doing so i'm just going to put it here and place this scraper on this side of the cake and I make sure it is touching from top to bottom and it is just touching the board just lightly don't press on the cake just lightly pressing then you move all around so make sure it's just touching the cake don't press on the cake because if you press on the cake the cream is going to come off so I love uh, just pressing gently so you go around until you get your surfaces uh, smooth and neatly done then you can remove again the, just the same way we did on the top you remove your scraper when the cake is still rotating and you move it out from the side of the cake this is how, look what i'm doing uh, the cake is still rotating and my sides are uh, well and neatly done so i remove gently from outside so I don't leave any mark on the side so that's the two ways another thing you can do we have 
this scraper, the, no, the, the pattern scraper, it has two sides, uh, the small sides and the, um, big the big side. So you can pattern your sides. The, the same way we, we, we put this one is we are going to make sure it touches from top to bottom. Then again, the angle here should be small to avoid scraping off the, uh, the, cream, the eh? cream. We just need the pattern. So again, we start moving around. We are pressing gently, so you, you, you keep rotating the, the cake until you get a neat pattern eh, on your cake. Eh? So I'm going to stop when I see it is neatly done. Remember, I'm not pressing uh, with a lot of pressure, just gently doing that so that I don't scrape off uh, the, uh, my cream to avoid keeping repeating refilling the cream on the cake. Once I see again uh, my sides are well done, what I do, I remove the scraper as the cake rotates like that. And I'm done. Right? Yeah. So that's what you do. Then you can take again your your palette knife. Because you need uh, to flatten the, the top. The top eh? So you start where the, the lowest point, like here, and flatten towards inside halfway. Then make sure you you clean your knife. Then again towards inside. Clean your knife. Clean your knife. Like that, you make sure it's well done and you have sharp edges. So, always clean your knife. Then, again, you take our serviettes and clean the board, don't touch the cake. So, just round. So, you clean the board, don't touch the cake. So you can do this with a serviette or a clean towel all around. All right, we are done. That's okay. All right. So once uh, you uh, all the sides are evenly done and you have your pa uh, your pattern on the sides. So now we need to put chocolate. We said we can do the chocolate drips or the cage. But for now we are going to do the chocolate choppings where we put chocolate choppings on the sides. So there are many ways you can do the, uh, you can do the choppings. You can grate using a knife. Like now I'm going to use a knife direct to the cake. Or you can grate somewhere else and uh, 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 as in pick with your hand and throw it to the cake. The, the problem is uh, doing it on the sides. Once this chocolate touches your hand, it starts to melt. So it is going to look like dust you have poured on, on the side of cake. And we need yeah. them, uh, some good size of the choppings for it to look nice. So I prefer use, uh, doing direct on the on cake. cake. Alright, so now since I, uh, I want to read on the cake, I'm going to use a, a, a hollow bowl that I'm going to place on top of the cake so that when I'm doing the chopping the chocolate doesn't go in so you make sure you place it at the center like that so then I take my my chocolates and now I can be free to chop any how I want and just chop direct to the cake like that so first of all, fill the top part. Don't put a lot of it. We just want to stain for it to look nice. So don't put a lot of uh, the chopping. Then we start with the top like that. Then we go to the sides. This uh, watch what how I do it. So. I keep rotating the cake. 
so this one you can just do it you, you see I'm doing it with a knife yeah so I'm not touching the uh, the, the chocolate eh? then I continue See the chopping are big, yeah? Yeah. So you go all around, eh? Until the cho uh, the cake is covered with the choppings, eh? So you can keep using this one that is falling on the board. Eh? We are done with covering the cake with chocolate. Eh? So you can check where the places where your chocolate didn't go and you do that all okay? right then no you can pick these chocolates and throw it to the cake it's a bit me messy but don't worry we'll have a neat finish at the head then once you're done you can push the, the chocolates towards the cake that with a knife then again you need a serviette you clean the board so remember the customer needs the cake neat so you clean the excess chocolates that is on the board so we can just put some liquid on our service just to make sure everything is clean right thank you so remember the customer you don't uh, to let the customer know that you did chopping so you just need to it to be neat and clean then once you're done you wipe the dry one and there we are now it's very neat then when, once you're done remember now we need to remove the bowl gently so chocolate doesn't fall on the cake all right so there we are now we want to do some piping on the cake this way now i'm going to use my disposable piping bag as you can see this one then i'm going to start work to put my nozzle inside here so I take my nozzle, put inside, then cut just a small space for the nozzle to come. My uh, the part of the pattern to come on the uh, on the outside. Now, and so once you have cut your nozzle and you put it in your piping bag, remember not uh, not to cut a big space. So. Uh, you just cut just enough space for the nozzle to fit so once it fits uh, you can put now your cream so remember this is a cream that we had with earlier on so I'm going to put inside all of it so you see there's no wastage of cream I've totally used my cream for the half kg eh? all right there you go then we are going to push my cream down like that so you see 
Then, again, once now uh, I want to pipe, remember now I'm going to uh, pipe on the edges of the cake. So I'm going to start here. So the, uh, the technique that I'm using is called PSP. I call it PSP. Press, stop, and pull. So as I do some waves on top, like that. So I need to put eight of them. So I first of all put two across, another two on the other side. Yes. Can I try one of those? It looks so easy as you do it. It looks easy. Can you try? <laughs> try. Let me try. Mm -hmm. So what happens, you have to hold it straight to the kick, all right? You have to press with a lot of pressure as you go up. And here you are. Another one. Very fast, up. Right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. you. I have baker. tried. You are a baker. A decorator. Now I can take my orders. <laughs> you can start taking your orders. All right. So, now at this point, uh, Black Forest without uh, fruits is just like a chocolate cake. So, now we had prepared some strawberries, strawberries here. So, we want to put them on top of, uh, of this piping. So, I'm going to take uh, half of each. Then place eight bedding towards inside and I place gently like that. So you have to press. So the strawberries make makes the cake look elegant. And also uh, the customer love loves it when it has strawberries. So you put all around. So we are, there we are. And the cake looks awesome. Now, after putting the strawberries, uh, of course, we need to write the name for the customer. And today, our customer is top sub themselves. So I'm going to. I'll be using ganache, right? So I need to write top sub at the top. Remember, now you can use ganache to write happy birthday once you're done uh, for the customer that has given you. So I'm going to use my ganache. So I have to test if it is working. Then I come here. Uh, so remember you have to check the size of your name so you, uh, you know where it's going to fit. Now we are done. Mm -hmm. So now you can be able to deliver to a cake, uh, the cake to the customer. And the customer is right here with us. So mercy. <laughs> I receive it on uh, behalf. Yes, on behalf of Top, Top Sub. We want to gift you this cake. Then, Thank you so much. Yes, so you, if you can be free, you can start eating even from now. Even from okay. now. So this is what you get from Friendly Bakers for mm -hmm. you, for your black forest orders for your white forest they can do the same for you and any other cake design that you want just get in touch with them at friendly bakers on facebook right yes yes on instagram still friendly bakers all you get our work in wakaji because heaven so there we go Thank you so much. Thank you very this much. Awesome. Welcome. Looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe now we can cut. Oh, oh yes. I can, and wait, maybe to, see I can wait for that. that what part. it looks like inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want us you tell us you taste the cake and tell us how it is. So this is our signature cake, Black Forest is the most sold cake in our bakery. Wow. I also love the black forest. Wow. So, Marcy, can you tell us how it is? So I'm going to have a slice and, you're and me, tell you how and you're it making looks. making me some like this. <laughs> 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 uh, even though now it becomes sweet when it's being shared. 
Again. that is really really good mm -hmm. very moist mm -hmm. and the feeling mm -hmm. is awesome mm -hmm. yeah. can you have another one but this one i'll have sasa behind the camera okay behind the scenes sasa hizi lazima tu sasa tukule all right let, let me twist i also want to know uh, before i give a cake to a customer i have to know what i'm giving them so let, let me tell you <laughs> mm. Nice. Perfect. All right, so I want to take this chance to thank Topsav team for this uh, time you have been to me. We don't take for granted. We know uh, these uh, stories that you're giving the, the Baker's Diaries, they're going to impact uh, other bakers who need to grow in this baking industry. So that's why we say thank you and continue the good work you're doing. So we appreciate you at Ferry Bakers. And you're very much welcome. Mm -hmm. And also thank you very much for your time mm -hmm. and for sharing your skills mm -hmm. with us and the rest of the world. You're much welcome. So you can have the cake and we'll enjoy for yes. sure. That we will. <laughs> so that's it for today at the Friendly Bakery workshop. We have seen the kind of work they will put out for you. And uh, every tool and ingredient used at these uh, in these tutorials are all available at Tops of Branches. You can call in and place your orders. You can shop by the website at www.topsavltd.co.ke. And that's it for today.